everybody. Good morning. It is Wild Ass Wednesday. Try 100 to talk to Chris Hopper after doing his 100,000 miles in 100 days. Let's see if we can't get this one to work. I have a good feeling about this. So you should notice this is now across my desk back on the stand where it goes. Let me send him a message quick. I am back on now and we'll go from there. Good morning, Tyler. Uh, see if I can't. All right, so we'll get him fired up, shoot me an invite, and uh, I, I don't know. No idea. So we'll get Chris Hopper on. This is Wild Ass Wednesday. I did figure out it is season two, episode number 36. So we'll get, uh, let's go back over to Facebook. Episode two, number 36. Let's see if we're back live. Don't see it yet. There we go. And we'll share that. Good morning to everybody tuning in. Okay. Good morning. Thank you guys for coming back and uh, tolerating this. Let's see if we can't figure out why. This isn't working. Hopefully we can get Hopper on board this time. This just is frustrating. Let's see if he's back yet. Sent him a message. So at this point, you know, or whatever, I sent him a message says I'm back on. We'll see as soon as he gets it. We should be hearing from Hopper. Um, if you were paying attention, uh, to the last couple, if you saw this, um, we've had a fair amount of struggles. I'll share this too. Okay. So, Shell, <laughs> yeah, evidently you love seeing me because you're watching. <laughs> All right. So, Hopper's trying again. Let's make it work this time. Send the in. Looks like we're getting him added. Of course, it's looked like that the last couple times, hasn't it? <laughs> do, 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 do. It's taking longer than it should. Not liking it. I hear Callie laughing in the other room. <laughs> What is happening? Why is this happening? Is there a way? That I can call from a Mac computer. Let's see. I don't get it. We're trying it. Hey, all right, so here's what we're gonna do, guys. I need to know if somebody can hear Hopper. So, good morning, Chris. Good morning, can you guys hear me all right? There, so I have, uh, um, so I have, now you're on my desktop computer. The speaker's quite a bit louder. I think you're talking as loud as me. So this should, this might work. This might work. Okay. All good. Um, <laughs> waiting. Okay. So report from the office here is you are loud and clear. So let's start this all over. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Take 100 to talk about 100,000 in 100 days. All right. <laughs> so how you been? I'm good. I'm good. That is good. So I have just a total mess right now, which is funny because normally you're on my screen i can look at you we mentioned on the last video i deleted that right away actually um so you can't go back and find those unless you're some real techie guy which obviously i'm not 
But uh, I made the comment that you are not a very look at me guy. You just like to go out and do this stuff and not draw a lot of attention to yourself. And this is kind of the ultimate scapegoat. We just can't get Facebook to work. So here people don't even have to have to look at you. That works. <laughs> it works for you. Um, so I'm going to do my best to try to um, watch comments and, and scribble down questions if anybody has any. But first off, I'm very honored to have you here. Thank you so much. Um, I can about imagine you got everybody tugging at you to talk. And I, I'm really oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm really happy that you came to join me this morning. Um, so thank you. Let me start off with that. Questions? Yeah, no problem. I appreciate it. Yeah, so random, you know, like we talked about earlier, um, you know, just kind of random questions, some things. I don't need, you know, I, I don't like to make these shows all about wild ass. I have a box right here so people can see that. By now, hopefully you guys know who I am. I'm just I'm just an ass man that got lucky in the motorcycle business. So um, some of the stuff to talk to you about, like one of, you know, how, what's your, your riding history? When did you start? Um, I mean, I grew up on, on dirt bikes, probably like, you know, everyone else. So I, I've been riding, uh, you know, my whole life. Uh, I was a big uh, enduro dirt bike guy. So uh, I've been around motorcycles forever. Okay. What age? How old were you when you started? Um, I guess I would have been probably 10, 9 or 10. Okay, little guy. I think uh, yeah. it's funny how common this story is. I think I don't think you and I are very different in age. So you were riding when they were 80 cc's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a little, uh, I think my first one was a little uh, Indian, a little 50. Oh, God, that's, that's a cool bike. I hauled one back for uh, one of the guys that worked at Indian. I hauled it from Daytona for him. Um, Never even seen one before. It's such a cool yeah, little bike. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to have that bike back, that's for sure. Yeah, no kidding. And at 10, year old, 10 years old, you were a little big for it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about this. World record ride, you did 100,000 miles in 100 days. One of the questions I have is, how long does this take? How long were you planning for this? I heard of this before you started it, um, but what, what went into that? There wasn't really a, a whole lot of planning, I mean, and for the people that know me, obviously, I'm, I'm not going to put a whole lot of effort into it, into, into planning much, but I was uh, supposed to do it last year, actually. I had it, uh, kind of came up with it last year, said, so, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do it, and then uh, found out that the Hoka Hay got pushed back uh, a little bit to August, so I didn't want to start that late in the year, just, you know, for weather reasons, mm -hmm. so I just said, okay, after the I knew that I knew I was in the IBR this year, so I just kind of said, okay, as soon as the IBR is done, I'll I'll take off right after that. You know, I'll rest up for a week or so and take off, and that's what I did. So you did the, the IBR, the Iron Butt Rally. Um, ex talk about that. What was that? Uh, eleven days, eleven thousand miles. Uh, it's a rally. Uh, for those who are not familiar, I guess just you know scavenger hunt type deal. Um, all across the country it's the it's the the top dog as far as you know rallies in the rally world that's the that's the pinnacle so uh, that's what everyone shoots for to get their three digit IBA number um, and uh, I've luckily I was successful enough to to have a silver finish and, and get it that's that's impressive in itself so I'm you know I grew up dirt bikes my industry was dirt bikes so um, I didn't know and, and it's, it makes me look foolish, but I'm okay with that. I didn't know what an iron butt rally was. So that's why I asked, you know, to explain that. I can't be the only guy that doesn't know. Up until recently, I did not know what those rallies were. To me, because I've been, you know, on this side of the business of the, the motorcycle street world um, for the last, you know, 10, 12 years, to me, a rally was like Sturgis or you go to bike week um, and it's just everybody getting together to ride. Right. But these rallies that you're talking about are quite a bit different. Oh, yeah. 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 Just scavenger hunt type deals. Uh, you know, there's several different ones all across the country. There's some really great ones out there. There's, you know, long ones, short ones. Uh, you know, I, I do one myself uh, each year. And it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, just kind of a kind of a different world. And uh, like you said, most of them are just the, the normal rallies that people think of, or, you know, Sturgis or whatnot, but it's just a different kind of rally. It's a riding rally. 
Yeah, it's it baffles my mind how much planning and stuff works into that. So you had to do 11 or not, you didn't have to, you chose to do 11,000 miles in 11 days. Then you took basically. Yeah, if you're going to be a finisher, you, have, you pretty much have to hit that number. Okay. And then you take a, a short little seven day nap and decide to do this 100,000 miles that you set out to do. So you say you're not Correct. much of a planner. What did you do? in those seven days to get ready? Um, just normal everyday life. I mean, there wasn't really a whole lot extra that went into it. Uh, there, there's, uh, you know, to, to me, there's not a lot of difference in just a, a couple of day ride and a hundred day ride. I mean, it's, it's all the same gear. It all works the same way. Just, you know, just on the road longer. So didn't do a whole lot of extra planning for it. <laughs> um, I, pl I planned out the first uh, two days. So that's what I had planned, just a couple of things that I wanted to get to really quick. Uh, so I, I did have those kind of routed and planned. And then after that, I, I winged it the rest of the way. That That's awesome to me to hear you say, well, it's just like doing another ride. <laughs> it's very much not. <laughs> One not. Yeah, you got to look at it. Yeah. yeah I, oh, I, I get that totally. That's it's awesome. The... Uh, the question that I always get, and, and I hear it from people, when you guys go out, and I, I'm saying you guys, there's a number of elite people that hopefully I get to meet, that uh, you go out and you do these long distance rides, whether it's 10 days, a month, people take this time off work, you're doing 100 days. So my question is, how the hell can you afford to do that? How can you take that much time off work? What is it you're doing? <laughs> That's my question. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh. Yeah, luckily I'm blessed in that area. I have a lot of time, so I'm self-employed, uh, real estate investor. So uh, I've got a bunch of rental properties. So uh, and, and I've got some good crews that work for me in systems. So I can, uh, you know, I can. I, I actually bought a couple of houses when I was on the road. Um, you know, so I can I can I can work from pretty much anywhere, and then just kind of get it to my crews, and they take care of things. So uh, luckily I'm. I've got a lot of time, so a lot, a lot of free time, so I'm able to do stuff like that. That's awesome. I'm, I'm so happy for you that you can do that. Um, I think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit distracted. I'm copying uh, a good question here from somebody that I'll get to here in a little bit, as long as we have time. Um, so that, yeah, that is just like, it's so cool. And I happen, I know that because we had talked about it in Sturgis when you were there. When I saw you, I think it was day seven and uh, you were, I think five or 700 miles ahead of schedule at that point. Right. So you were, uh, you weren't messing around right from the beginning. Um, go ahead. Well, yeah, for, for, from the beginning, I mean, that was kind of the plan is to knock out a couple of big days to, to start with, to, to get a little cushion, because I knew at some point I was going to be heading out to the East Coast, which was going to, you know, slow me down and be a big time suck. So I tried to try to make a little bit of time in the beginning. One of uh, one of the things that I, I remember, because I followed you before I've met you, um, I've seen your, you know, your spellings of your name in all of these different states. Where did that come from, and how do you do that? Um, yeah, that was just kind of some, I, I thought it would be cool to, to spell out my name across Texas, and I wanted it to be big, so I, I plotted it out. Uh, took a took a long time, I mean, just, you know, kind of fumbling my way through it. I basically just used Google Maps, so I just try to find a street, try to, you know, spell it out and all that, and it, it worked out good. The first one I did was in Texas, and it was right at 1,500 miles. So I did a, a you know, DBG out of that. Um, after I did the first one, I just I thought it was neat. I thought it was cool, and then I came up with the idea, okay, let me just do it in every state, uh, and that's what I started working on. And every one that I've done, I think I'm at 18 states right now, and every one that I've done has been incorporated in. Uh, an iron butt ride, either for a BBG or a saddle sore. So okay, uh, yeah, just something, something different, something to do, uh, something, something kind of cool. So yeah, it's really uh, cool. I'm getting down to the, the the states I have left now are the really hard ones. A lot of the East Coast and a lot of the states that really don't have the roads to to make it feasible. So um, I'm I'm figuring those out slowly. 
Maybe finding city blocks to do them around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the bigger ones are fun. There's a couple of states that I've done that were only you know three, four hundred miles that really weren't all that that great. But uh, you know, I'll, I'll get them done eventually. Um, I just thought of a question I was going to ask you that I didn't tell you about earlier, and I forgot about it. But anyways, so the the name spelling thing for those of you guys that were following this and tracking the ride. You also spelt out Jamesy, who's kind of the the big deal behind this whole ride. So tell us about that. Yeah, yeah. So that was uh, actually I uh, I put that together uh, over a year ago, and then I sent it to Riot, and I thought that was one that you know it might be cool for him to do to to raise money and you know do that. I plotted out. I didn't I didn't realize how how big it was because the way I. I plotted out Google or whatever. I, I can't get the total miles or whatever without doing a whole bunch of extra work. So I pretty much just wrote it out and, you know, it is what it is and gave it to him. And uh, I know he, was, he had, had plans to do something with it. It, it was going to ride it. Just never, never got around to it or whatever. And then in the middle of this ride, I was like, you know what, let me just pull it up and I'll, uh, I'll do it myself and see what it comes out at. And yeah, it, it was a lot, a lot longer than what I thought it was. It was, what I think it's 4,400 miles or whatever it took, uh, took a hundred hours. So yeah, it was, it was pretty big. It was pretty cool. That's very cool. And it also keeps, I suppose it kept your mind a little bit off of the, the entire, the big picture of the hundred thousand miles too. Yeah. 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 There, there, I was always thinking about, you know, uh, because I didn't have a plan or whatever, you know, what's next, where am I going tomorrow? What's, you know, what, what's next on the agenda? So there was always something to keep my mind occupied. One of my questions that I always ask people after trips, especially children, if, um, you know, when you talk to kids that have gone on, gone on a big road trip, right, they spend so much time in the car. And when they talk to, you know, the parents are always talking about it, it took forever to get there to kind of drum up, you know, to drown out the negatives of the trip. I always ask these same two questions and sometimes they have the same answer. So I'm going to ask you these <laughs> questions um, of your hundred days. What was your favorite part of the trip, and what was the coolest thing you saw? So you know, a story, something you saw. They don't have to be together. Man, that's a tough one because I saw a lot of a lot of really cool stuff for those that were following along. You know, I tried to put a lot of pictures up. There was a, quite a few pictures I didn't post or whatever that were just kind of my memories or whatever. But uh, for the most part, I tried to document the majority of it. So. I did see a lot of cool stuff. I don't know that I could really just just pick out one. Um, I mean, I spent I took you know almost half a day and took the ferry over to Mackinac Island and walked around over there. That was a that was a great time. That was a good experience. Um, as, as far as attractions or whatever, I mean, one of the top ones I would probably have to say would be the the Grotto of Redemption in Iowa. Uh, for whatever reason, I just I thought that was just a, a really cool and neat stop. Uh, it's just the largest grotto in the U.S. or the world. I don't remember what it is, but uh, it's just huge, and it was just fascinating to walk around and see. I don't think I even know what that is. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can, it, it, <laughs> grotto, grotto of the Redemption, uh, you, you can look it up. It's just, just this massive uh, grotto. It's religious stuff, and, and there's like millions of dollars worth of stones that are built into this thing. It's just, it's just a re really... Re Really neat attraction. Really neat. Well, I'm writing it down because Iowa's not that far away from me. Um, okay. Yeah, go 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 check it out. It's definitely definitely interesting. Yeah. Um. So yes, I followed. I saw all the pictures, the documentation, and I'm thinking to myself, how the hell is he going to stay on time? Um. So like you said, you got some pictures. You got some things you didn't want to share uh, by pictures or whatever, which leads me to this question. Um. Anytime we get on a motorcycle, it's inherently dangerous, right? It's no different than driving a car, maybe a little different, but um, there, there always seems to be a story or two of the close call, um, and you never kind of want to, you, you know, as soon as that happens, you want to get, get by it, forget about it, and keep moving on until you're done. Do you have any of those stories that you'd like to share? Um, yeah, I've told, told a couple people about, it. I mean, the, the worst one is luckily I will say that on the whole trip, I never laid my bike down. So, uh, which is, which is amazing. I mean, that's a lot of, a lot of days, a lot of miles, 
a lot of hours on the bike. So to, to not lay it down is, is pretty remarkable. So uh, I did get lucky there. But I guess the, the, the worst thing was um, I, w I was fresh. I had just stayed at uh, Ken Andrews house in uh, Arkansas. I got up, I was driving through Oklahoma. I, I think it was like a Sunday morning. It was, I don't know, seven or eight in the morning. I mean, it was early, I was fresh. I was, you know, a couple hours into the ride. And I guess I was just zoned out going down the, the freeway uh, before I caught a glimpse of my phone that my exit was, you know, 0.1 miles ahead. So, uh, you know, I started to zip over and make the exit. And as I'm looking in my rearview mirror to make sure there's no cars coming or anything, uh, I hit the exit and I didn't realize that it was one of those basically full U-turn exits. Okay. So... Oh, yeah, so I, I got, you know, I was on the freeway cruise and I don't know, probably 80 or something. So I'd gotten slowed down when I hit the exit at, you know, 60 something miles an hour, I remember looking at. But uh, when I saw it was a U turn, I, I tried to lay the bike over and get on the brakes a little bit and make the turn. But, you know, when you're, when you're leaned over like that and hit the brakes, you get that little wobble. So I uh, just made the quick decision to stand it up and saw a big grassy hill off the edge and, Figured that's what I was going to do. So, uh, slowed down a little bit more to, I don't know, I think, I think I was going like 45 or something when I looked at it. And I just hit that grass and started going down the hill and couldn't hit my brakes at that point. I knew I was going to lay it down. I mean, I, I thought that was a, that was a given. So, just uh, hopefully I could lay it down on the hillside so I could at least have a chance of picking it up. The bike wouldn't be upside down. I don't know. I mean, it all happens really quick, but it just seems like it's all slow motion. So, yeah, uh, I just start this was really thick grass and like I said, it was going down a hill and real bumpy and all that. So I'm just bouncing around and it just kind of hit me like real quick that, wait a minute, I haven't laid this down yet. <laughs> right, well, let me just, let me see what happens. Let me, let me try to turn. I slowly kind of made it, you know, back up the hill and on the road. And now just as soon as I hit the road, I just stopped through the kickstand down. I was jumping around laughing, just wishing I had that on video because that, that would have been amazing because the bike was just absolutely covered in grass. The hole underneath was just caked with big clods of mud and grass and all that. So I'm having to dig all that out. You know, I was looking to make sure I didn't puncture anything, have a leak or anything like that. But that was probably the probably the worst thing that, that happened. You know, <laughs> that's an experience most people have throughout their life one time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, that is a testament to being a good rider for one. Um, so obviously very well experienced. Um, how much of that came from your dirt biking days? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, no, I, I think that's, I think that makes it plays a huge part in it. I mean, knowing, you know, most people think they hit the grass, they're just gonna lock up the brakes and try to stop. And, mm -hmm. you know, if, you, if you've ever done anything like that, as soon as you hit the brakes on a street, especially on a street bike and grass like that, you're just gonna slide all over the place and you're definitely gonna lay it down. So yeah, uh, best thing to do is, you know, just throttle through it, ride it out and try to save it that way. You have a lot better shot. So yeah, having that, that dirt bike experience and all that, that, that definitely plays a big part in it. Did you get pictures of the bike full of grass or were you so shaken at the time? No, oh yeah, I, I, I just, I, I literally, I was jumping around, I was laughing. And, I wanted to clean it off and just get, get on down the road or forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I could bring that back up for you then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, in your ride, so I was watching, you know, you know I was tracking you because I was texting you and giving you a hard time throughout. But yeah. um, the, I noticed looking back at your map, and if you guys haven't seen this map, you can go to his page, you can go to the Mile Monsters page, it's all over the place, right? Of all the places you rode, you kind of avoided Nevada and California. Yeah, not not intentionally. I had plans to go out there. I really wanted to hit Northern California because uh, I love riding out there. There's just there's amazing riding out there. And the day that I happened to be heading that way, um, it was just it, the weather wasn't good. There was some traffic, and, and I just made a decision to to kind of change course and I would go back that way later. Okay. Uh, and by the time I made it back over into that area, uh, I wound up in San Diego and I was going to head up, uh, you know, Highway 1 and, and all that. But just, I was behind at the time uh, quite a bit mileage-wise. So 
uh, the, the traffic, I'm looking at my map and it was just solid red, just traffic was horrible. I just, I just kind of made the decision, just kind of scrap that whole area at that time. Just, I couldn't, I couldn't make it work. That I, I understand that. Yeah, I, I didn't even dawn on me that you had to watch weather and it always starts that way, doesn't it? And moves its yeah. way across the country. Um, yeah, same, same thing out in Maine. I, I had big plans to spend a whole lot more time up in uh, Maine in that area. There were some things I wanted to see up there. And there was a, 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 a big just line of, of showers that really didn't look that bad. Um, you know, I was going to go ahead and punch through it, but, uh, another friend of mine, actually Eugene Lopez, uh, was riding up in that area and he said it took him three hours to punch through that. I'm like, okay, well, it's going to take three hours to go through it. And then when I got done, I have to come back through it again. I'm like, I just don't want to, I don't want to spend that much time in a, in a really bad storm. So had to, had to scrap those plans as well. That would also, I would think be incredibly physically exhausting. That three hours could take eight hours of energy out of you too i suppose yeah yeah for sure absolutely huh did not yeah i'm not opposed to riding in the rain and i did quite a few times there was a couple of couple of good storms that i was in uh for for many hours but just you know i, I tried to avoid it when i could just for that reason it just it, it drained you yeah yeah for sure um let's see one of the the constant laughs it seemed like um, how many run-ins with the law did you have? How many times were you pulled over? I, I wrote down my guess, and I can't remember what the actual number yeah, was. Yeah, I think it was uh, 14. I was wrong. Yeah, <laughs> I four, thought it was 13. 14 and three tickets, yeah. yeah. 14 and three tickets. A little, bit, a little bit more than what I was expecting. I mean, I was, I was actually expecting to get stopped, you know, eight or nine times and get, you know, get two or three tickets, so... Uh, Got stopped a few more times than what I had expected, but I was about right on on the ticket count. Did you were you able to tell them what you were doing, why you were doing it when you, when they'd stop you? Uh, some of them, yeah, some of them. There, there were a couple that didn't care, and uh, but yeah, for for the most part, I, I could you know I, I got out of them. There, there's always a good story there, so yeah. Um, I can't wait to hear some of those. Uh, we won't do it today because I think uh, it shows that we're about 23 minutes in so far. Um, let's see. Question that came, uh, Callie brought up this morning. Throughout the ride, uh, you, you had to go through these stages over this 100, 100 days. Uh, excited, hopeful, monotonous, over it. Did you experience all of those and at what point? Um, you know, it's easy to say you were excited yeah, in the I, beginning. Yeah, I had all, all, the, all the normal emotions or whatever. I was never to the point to where uh, I wanted to quit or I was done or over it. Um, I, I never had that because this was the, the, the most fun I've ever had on a bike. I mean, it was just an amazing trip and every day was a new day. And, and you know, I love riding. So, uh, but I did have my days where I was just, I was kind of over riding that day. And I think mm -hmm. it was probably day... I don't remember exactly, 52, day 50 something, um, I was just kind of, kind of done. I just, it, like, I was stopping like every hundred miles just for, you know, I'd find an excuse to stop where there's gas or stretch my legs or get something out of the bike or, you know, any excuse I could find to stop and pull over. And, and finally at about 600 miles, I was like, you know what, I'm just, I'm completely done. Just get off the bike. You know, go get a hotel, just get some really good sleep and rest up. So, yeah, that was my lowest day, like 600 miles. So, okay. I and I think I had, had to get off the bike and get a good rest and let the body recharge and all that. Yeah, it made a huge difference. That's, yeah, the, the best part is that you were well aware of that for yourself. Um, I think that's right around the time we thought that might come into play. Um, mm -hmm. Because you, you know, you had you had one goal. Like there was one record ahead of you, right? Right. And who did that? And what was his record? Yeah, that's Matt Wise. Uh, lives in the Dallas area. Um, he was at forty five thousand forty five days. And, and we actually rode together during those days on my ride. So that was that was pretty cool. Yeah, that was a good highlight. Yeah, for sure. And that's what I was gonna say. Rumor was he came and rode with you for a day. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. All, all day. He, he came down here and we rode around down in South Texas, Padre and all that. And uh, yeah, it was, 
had a, had a great time. That's awesome. The, uh, the camaraderie amongst the long distance riders and the support that everybody shows each other is, it's nothing short of amazing to me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. One of the questions, if I'm not mistaken, all of your maintenance was done at the same place or am I wrong? Yeah, I got, uh, tried to try to come back to my home dealer with public Harley Davidson and, uh, in Stafford, uh, try to make it back there around every 10,000 miles for, for service and everything. Um, I, I did wind up getting, uh, just two oil changes, uh, at the dealership in, uh, Arkansas, um, you know, where the, where the kins go or whatever. Uh, so they, they hooked me up with a couple of oil changes so I wouldn't have to come all the way back here. Sure. Um, and then, but yeah, for, for the most part, all the major services and everything you're done at, at, at my home dealership and tires and everything. And that, um, I know that kind of got missed in the planning question, but that had to be planned ahead, having all the tires and everything sitting there for you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, had, uh, I had ordered 10 sets of tires uh, a couple of months, uh, you know, b beforehand, so. Okay. Um, let's see. If a guy wants to get into long distance riding, now let's not, you know, any, is there anything else you have to share for the 100,000? What's that? Um, any any other things you want? Any stories or anything you want to share from that that ride? Something that we did I miss something? Um, not that, not that I can think of uh, off the top of my head. I mean, uh, you know, it, as far as getting into it, that's just a matter of you know, you just gotta you gotta get on there and take off and try and you know figure out some things that are gonna work for you and what's not gonna work. Um, that's the thing we, you know, all the, all the, the, the big long distance guys get the question all the time. Hey, what do you do this? What do you do here? And it's just, it's, it's not really a, a good question because what I do may not work for you. Uh, we all kind of have our own systems, our own setups and, you know, just kind of trial and error on our part. We kind of learn something new on each trip. You know, I learned some, some stuff on this trip that I had been doing that, works fine on just a little thousand mile ride, but if you're going to do multi-day, it actually doesn't work. So I got to change some things up and uh, you just got to kind of figure out what works for you. Um, so I, before I, I, I see, I went right on past my handwritten question. Um, when this was over, well, this, before this, Michael Poole put in a question. He says, how did you deal with the solitude or boredom since you had so much time inside your own head did you solve? Did you solve all of those questions we all think about when you rode? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I solved all the world problems. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it's. I mean, that, that that stuff doesn't bother me. And again, I, I was always looking, you know, looking ahead, trying to come up with some general idea of direction where I'm going to go. You know, what am I going to go see? Uh, you know, because for for those following along, obviously, you saw I made a a whole lot of stops, you know, it, it wasn't just cruising up and down the interstate. It, it was a lot of back roads, a lot of stops, a lot of sightseeing and that kind of stuff. So, um, it, it, I was always thinking about, you know, what, what's next, where am I going, you know, where's the next thousand miles going to take me. So uh, I, I was occupied pretty much for most of the time. And obviously, you know, social media dealing with that, um, you know, having fun with all the haters and stuff. That was, that was entertaining. That occupies a lot of time. So <laughs> I'm not going to go there. They're not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, Riot just posted the question, uh, or he, he made a comment and I'm guessing he wants you to talk about these sand dunes and Jesus place. What is that? Um, yeah, that's that's when we we met up uh, to to go out to see Turbo and and you know meet, meet with them. One of the kids that, that we helped get a van for. Uh, I'm sure everyone's aware of that. So we rode together. Yeah, we 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 were rolling through the the, the sand dunes out there uh, in California. That's kind of a, an amazing place out there. So I just kind of stopped and went up and took in some sights there. Uh, it's kind of a if you've ever ever ridden out there. Um, it, it's just, it, it's, it, it just goes on forever. You just look around and just sand, sand forever. Huh. So it's pretty, pretty amazing place. Um, so you, you talked about getting the van for turbo. 
which I haven't talked about yet with you because we talked about that with Riot. Um, brief summary, you're right. You did this for the Mile Monsters as a fundraiser, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And talk about the fun to the Mile Monsters quick. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, when, when this whole thing started, uh, you know, I mean, obviously I knew I was going to gonna do it for, for some type of charity or whatever. Uh, and, you know, R Riot's great at that. You know, he, he raises a lot of money. He's got a, he's got a good thing going with, with Mile Monsters. And uh, I talked to him, um, you know, last year about it. And that's kind of right when he was starting Mile Monsters. I mean, I don't even think it was uh, completed yet, but called him and told him, hey, I got this uh, wild idea, you know, think, you know, think we could raise $100,000 for your charity, you know, are you interested? He came down and we met for breakfast here in town and talked about it. And yeah, we, you know, that's when we decided to, to kick this thing off and what we were going to raise the money for. Uh, he had just finished up putting Mile Monsters together and everything. So yeah, that's, uh, that's where it started. No, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, we, we've, had him on the show a couple times, so most of my viewers know about the Mile Monsters now, who they are, who Riot is, um, and right. what he does there. Shel Fetterson, you know her? Yes. She just popped a question in here that says, she wants to know how Kat dealt with you being gone all the time. She was thinking maybe it was a good vacation for her. No, no, I don't, I don't think so. She wasn't, uh, <laughs> wasn't, wasn't, wasn't real, wasn't real happy, uh, you know, being, being gone that long, but uh you know we, we got through it it worked out yeah i was home i was home more more often than i think what uh what they were expected so yeah it, it wasn't too bad well every ten thousand miles was every 10 days <laughs> right yeah um how how are we doing on time you okay still we got it's we're at 33 yeah, yeah, no, okay good. okay um yeah. you talked a little bit about advice for people wanting to get into long rides what uh have you been on you said you've been on a couple podcasts when we talked off the camera here um which yes. podcasts are they so the rest of us can go listen uh one of them was uh motorcycle mayhem radio which uh is some show out of uh new york actually yep um and, and then the other one uh was uh, uh motorcycle misfits podcast okay i've heard of both of those i um listened to one not the other motorcycle misfits Motorcycle Misfits, yeah, and you can find those on like wherever the you know wherever you find yeah. podcast or whatever. Yeah. Um. Cool. Rumor has it, so I'm looking for a mileage update for 2021 as a year entirely. You did a hundred thousand. You did eleven thousand that we know about. What are you at for mm. the year? Yeah. Good. Good question. Uh. As I was riding, I was nearing the end of my ride. I kind of, kind of dawned on me because uh, I knew my my other bike, my twenty road glide, uh, was sitting like at ninety eight thousand miles. So I knew a big majority of that came this year. So I was initially thinking that I should be at at eighty thousand miles, you know, plus this hundred, so I'll be close to close to one eighty. So. Uh, did have a shot uh, of hitting 200 for the year, but I, I didn't look. I never went back at, at my receipts or anything and looked just because I was on my ride. And yeah, that's what I wanted to focus on. I, did, I didn't want that to, you know, start worrying about that and, and mess up this ride. So, uh, and then obviously when I when I got back, uh, you know, got COVID, got sick. So uh, I honestly haven't even, still haven't even looked at it, um, but I should be somewhere between. 150 and 180. I, I don't know exactly where. So okay, um, but I'm not gonna not gonna put a whole lot of, of effort into it. I've just uh, I've had a great year, so I'm just gonna you know I've got a couple couple little rides planned for the rest of the year. And wherever I end up is where I end up. Not gonna shoot for the 200 and on purpose, anyways. I, don't know. I mean, it, if I blast it off another you know 10 or 15 days, so right. I'm just gonna kind of take it easy and. Uh, you know, I'll still have a great year. It's been a fantastic year. Yeah, no, and, and congratulations for sure. Very, very happy to hear you got your breath back and your energy sounds like you're coming back um, after being sick. So, uh, like I said, I'm just, I'm happy to hear that you're back. We have a party yeah. that we are going, oh, uh, before I forget, Josh Johnson, um, I, in what prompted me to remember this is you said you had a 20 road glide before this. 
You bought a new road glide for this. Um, why yes. Harley Davidson? Uh, why not? I know that's just a uh, yeah, why. <laughs> uh, I, I've always been a always been a Harley guy. Uh, had no issues with them. Um, you know, great bikes. I love them. And so I'm just a just a Harley guy. You know, everyone has their has their preference, and you know they probably are. You know, um, people say the the um, the gold wings. You're you know a lot more comfortable bikes or whatever, and that may be the case. But I'm just a Harley guy. Yep. No, that's a that's a legit reason. Um, the uh, let's see, I think we've covered everything. Um, of course, not a wild ass show, but you did sit on a wild ass the entire time, right? Absolutely, yeah. Stock seat okay. with the with the wild ass seat cushion, and that's that's all I've used. Uh, you know, that's what I had on my my twenty road glide. I actually still got it on there. Uh, you know, got the new one for this one, and yeah, that's that's all I use. I'm going to tell you in front of everybody if that bike ends up in a museum, that cushion can stay on it, and I'll give oh, you yeah, another absolutely. one. I'll give you another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so where can we go and find you? Um, other than I, I guess I don't even know since we're doing it this way through the phone, if if it's a uh, yeah, people can follow you through here. You find them right here on uh, on on Facebook. You're also on Instagram at at hops underscore adventures. Where else are you? TikTok famous, uh, YouTube channel, anything? No, no, that that's it. And I'm I'm kind of new to Instagram, so I'm still trying to figure that out. So, um, yeah, just Facebook and Instagram. Uh, I'm trying to get a little more involved in Instagram, but. You know, it's just one one more thing to worry about and deal with. So uh, most of the stuff is on, on Facebook. Okay. Yeah, that's, you know, I see you on both places. So I know you're there, but I want everybody to make sure they follow you. Go follow this guy. Um, yeah, super, super appreciative you came on. Thanks for tolerating the uh, face foolery this morning. Um, I, I don't know what it was. It had to be, I, well, it's still, it's not figured out, so. But we overcame. I don't know. It might right? be something on my end, whatever. I, who knows? Yeah, so. just like life on the road. We just figured out a way around it. So, yeah. Um, any final words? Anything you'd like to say? Um, no, just, just thanks for having me. I, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, I like, like, like getting out, out there. I like talking about it. Uh, I want to make everyone aware of it. And we're getting really close to, to hitting the goal. Uh, you know, the goal was to raise $100,000 for charity. Um, and, and we're we're pretty much there. So if anyone's listening and, you know, hasn't donated or wants to donate, uh, you can go to the Mile Monsters Facebook page or milemonstersinc.com and donate there. hundred percent of the money goes to the charity. I, you know, nothing goes to me. I, I funded the whole ride myself or whatever. So it's all, all money going somewhere. So, so there's, yeah, this isn't over yet. We have, uh, we're all meeting down in Panama city, uh, next weekend, the fourth, right? Yeah. Fourth, fifth, yes. something like that. Yes. Um, yeah. We're actually going to come down. We'll be there on the third to hang out with you guys. Um, you, I'm sure you're going to be doing some fundraising there. I have no doubts. You're going to, you're going to crack the, the sixth digit at that. Event. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely hit that. And I know some people for people who are listening and hadn't gotten their stuff or whatever. Uh, it was, it was kind of, kind of slow on our part. I mean, a lot of the orders went through Brian. Brian was out riding, you know, doing a lot of his stuff or whatever. So uh, when he got back, he'd get the stuff to us and we'd send some stuff out. So there's a there's a whole other round of stuff going out as well. So uh, apologize for the delays for those who hadn't received their stuff or whatever. Just kind of bear with us. It, it's for sure coming. Well, and the other thing is, I think, you know, when people do fundraisers, like you think of these big uh, nonprofit organizations that have multiple people that take care of things. I know it's Riot up in the Northeast. Um, he is Mile Monsters. I'm sure his wife helps out a little bit. Still, you're up two people. Um, yeah. How many you got down on your end? Uh, just, just, just me and the wife. So yeah, it's, you know, it, it's just a couple, couple, couple of guys who are always riding, always out. So trying to fit this stuff in, in between, you know, normal life and all that this is obviously not either one of our full-time jobs so you know we just got to kind of figure out how to how to make it work and having you know people on 
two different parts of the country, you know, figure this stuff out and get stuff sent out. He's got some stuff. I got some stuff. So, uh, you know, it, it, it wasn't some big, greatly organized ordeal that just runs like a machine. It's just, you know, us fumbling through it and, you know, we're, we're making it work, but it's all for a great cause. Uh, you know, people, you'll definitely get your stuff and money's going to the right spot. So, uh, we're just having to, you know, we're fumbling through it on our end. So, yep. Um, I saw somebody flipping through the comments here. Hoka, hey, 22, you in it? I'm sure. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Very cool. And then Riot trying to take all the credit, saying it's just him, not his wife. She's too busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he lets, she lets you do it, Riot. So <laughs> she's involved. Um, <laughs> it's funny. MileMonstersInc.com is the website for that. Um, I think that's it. I mean, I appreciate the time coming on. We're now... Oh shit, we're an hour past where I wanted to be, but you know what? It's been a pleasure. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. I, I enjoyed it. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you. You have a happy uh, Thanksgiving tomorrow, and uh, we'll see you next weekend. Yeah, yeah. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone out there, and uh, thanks for thanks for following along. Thanks for all the support. Um, you know, it means a lot. So, uh, look forward to seeing everybody. All right. Guys, come and find us in Panama City. If you're looking for details, go to milemonstersinc.com. If Riot doesn't have the information on there, he will, because um, I just told him that everybody's coming to the site to check it out. We'll be down there next weekend. You guys, like, follow the page, share this post. You'll be entered in a drawing to win. Um, we just give away random stuff that we pick up on the road, everything but roadkill. Um, you guys, thank you. Get yourself out. Have a great weekend this weekend. Remember, your ass deserves it. We'll see you uh, next week.